going on, YouTube world? Adam Adler here with PragmaticWays.com, coming at you today with a new series on debugging inside of Eclipse. So in this series, we're going to be going through the debugger inside of Eclipse, learning how to debug code, how to step through code, put on breakpoints, and, and all the other good stuff. So uh, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So I have this basic program here, okay, and I intentionally put a few bugs in this program so we can kind of step through it and see where these bugs actually happen and just really learn how to actually use the debugger here. So what I have going on here is I just have a basic int array, uh, 22344. Uh, then I created this little helper function here, and this is just multiply by, and it's going to accept the array and a number, the multiplier, and all this function's really going to do is its intent is to multiply every element in this array by the multiplier. So in this case, this array should be multi every element in this array should be multiplied by the number three. And then after that, we're going to just average up the array. And to do that, I created this other little helper function here, which is just going to accept the array. And then all it's going to do is just total up all the numbers in the array, all the elements in the array, and then it's going to divide it by the array length and then return that number there, which is supposed to be the average. And at the end, all we do is just print out what the average is supposed to be. So we could kind of just figure this out ourselves, right? So we see we're going to be multiplying all these numbers by three, so this is going to be uh, 6 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 12. Divide all that by 5, because that's how many elements there are in here. Uh, then we should end up with 9, right? Uh, just to sort of prove that here. We will do, let's see, 6 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 12. That equals 45. 45 divided by 5 is of course 9, okay? So let's go ahead and run this program now and just see what it outputs right away. And we can see that it does not come out with the correct output. It comes out with 3. So hopefully you have a close eye uh, and have a little bit of experience in programming already. You could probably already identify what the bug is, but let's just go ahead and try and step through it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a breakpoint. And basically what a breakpoint is is when you put in a certain uh, break in the code, uh, the breakpoint, and you want the, po the code to pause execution at that point. So you can just pause the program from running and sort of peek around, take a quick snapshot, see what variables equal what at any given time. And then you can slowly and incrementally step through different executions and, and uh, keep on going through the program step by step by step or line by line by line, function by function, so on and so forth. So to create a breakpoint, all I'm going to do is right on this left hand side where all the number lines are, I'm just going to double click on where I want my breakpoint. So in this case, I want my breakpoint to stop executing at line 7. Okay, And now instead of the, instead of the normal run program here, okay, where I would go to uh, run and then run. I'm actually going to go to debug now instead. I'm going to step into the debugger. As soon as I click that, I'm going to be prompted with some... Oh, you may be prompted with some message. I guess I clicked mine to uh, don't show me that message anymore, but basically it's going to say, hey, you're about to switch perspectives. Do you want to switch into the debugging perspective? And I would just uh, collect on, uh, select yes, switch me into the uh, debugging perspective, and then I make sure to always remember my decision for that. So basically now we can see though, uh, this is highlighted green, this line here is highlighted green, and that means we are now paused on this program. We can see it didn't automatically go down to here, and we see our output down here at the bottom. We're literally paused before executing this line right now. And now I can see, okay, before I'm about to go inside of this multiply by function, I can go over here on the right hand side and look at my variables watch window. And I can see this is where my array variable is, and I can click on it and see what the contents are right there. Or I can even drop, drop it down and see a little bit further. So I can see that array at index 0 has the value 2, array at index 1 has the value 2, at index 2 has the value 3, index 3, 4, index 4, also 4. Okay? So now what I want to do is I want to step into this function. In order to do that, we have a couple important buttons up here at the top that we want to go through. 
Uh, for this tutorial here, for this series, and we'll, we'll cover some more advanced stuff in the next one, but for this first series here, we're really only going to be focusing on this one right here. This is the step into function. And like the name says, this is going to allow us to literally step into our function or step into the uh, the execution or the command or, or what have you, whatever you happen to be on. In this case, we are on a, a function. Oops, didn't mean to do that. In this case, we're paused on a function, so I want to step into this function and then start going line by line by line inside of this function here. So let's just go ahead and click on this step into button. And I'm going to click on that. And now we can see that our execution line is inside of this function. Now, now we're starting on line 13. And now we can see our multiplier, which is right here, is 3. I could even hover over it, and Eclipse gives me this nice little window to show me that it's 3. I could do the same thing for the array. Eclipse is also going to give me a nice little window and show me all the elements in my, my array. And now I'm going to step into this for loop here. So again, I'm going to step into. And we can see what this program is supposed to be doing now. I can see my number is currently 2 and my multiplier is 3. All right, I will step into. And now I'm at the next number, which is uh, going to be 2 if I step into again. We can see the next number now is 2, so now it's at this index here, the second 2 in my array. And I will keep going uh, all the way throughout the entire array here. Alright, and now I have finished. So now we can see I'm right here, and now it's going to pop me back out to where this line, uh, where this function was called at. And then it'll step into the next one. So now I'm at here. So before I go into this next one, I guess I should verify that my array did multiply every element by 3. So if I can go right over here and I'll look at my array. Ah, see, we can see that the array still has the same values here. So we know that the bug happened right inside here. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and terminate, stop this execution right now, and sort of investigate. Now I can know that I first need to investigate what bug is inside of here. And hopefully you could clearly very easily see that we're not actually using this local variable here. We're not actually modifying the element in the array. We're sort of just extracting out and getting a reference of it, a copy of it, not an actual pointer to the actual uh, element inside there. So in order to do that, we actually need to use a traditional for loop here. So I'm going to switch this up and say uh, for int i equals 0, i is less than array dot length, and then i plus plus. And then instead of num, I'm just going to say array at element i. Okay. And now that should be all great there. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that. And then I'm going to go back to debug mode. Okay. Now let's see what this actually looks like here. If we're going to go ahead and step into this a few times. Okay. And we can see now that I'm at index 0. And I'm going to step into it again. All right. And now if I look at my array here. Now we can see that this first element here at index 0 actually did perform the operation that we wanted it to. And if I go ahead and step in through the rest of them, we can see that the next one also did that. Let's keep an eye on this one here as I press step into again. And then I'll press step into. There we go. That switched to 9. We should expect that this one should uh, switch to four, uh, 12, I mean, as soon as we step into it again. Step into, step into. That switches to 12. And of course, this will also switch to 12, step into, step into, and then that goes to 12. And then I'll keep going, and then I'm going to step back out, and then it's going to pop me out back here, and then jump right to the next line again. So I'll step into again. Okay. And now, again, let's just verify that the array still maintains all those new values here, which of course it does. So now our array properly did do this function. We know there's no longer a bug here. So we might as well now just, I'm just going to go ahead and terminate. And now I'm just going to run into the whole program again without the debugger. And we see it as 10 now, but we originally said that our uh, average for this array should be 9. So we clearly still have a bug. We tested all the way up into here. We know this is all good. So now I'm going to remove this breakpoint by just double clicking on it. And I'm going to put another breakpoint on line 8 because there's no point on debugging the rest of this code because we just did that. I know this code works. So I'm going to put a de another breakpoint here. I'm going to go back into the debugger and start trying to investigate why I have another bug now. So I'll go back to run and then debug. 
Okay, now we can see our array still has all the values from before. And again, that's because we, you know, this is fixed now. This whole function is fixed and we already debugged all that. So I know that's all good to go. So now due to my breakpoint, I have stopped on line eight. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and step into this get average function here. And now it pops me down here and I can see my total is going to start at that. And hopefully you see, well, okay, clearly that was a typo there. The total shouldn't start at six. The total should start at zero, okay? It shouldn't start at an array of index zero. Our total really should just start at zero. If we wanna grab the average of something where it's gonna start it at zero, okay? So then I will stop that and save that and then rerun that. I'll do debug again. And now we can step into all right, and now we see our total properly starts at zero, and now our total should properly add up to all the correct numbers. We can see over on the right-hand side, as I continue to press the step into function, we can see what's actually happening to our variables, code by code by code, or through throughout this for loop, throughout every line, so on and so forth. We can literally see what's happening to all of our uh, variables and all of our code here. So now we're outside of the for loop, and I'm going to uh, be executing this um, calculating the average um, line of code here and I'm gonna go step into that and I can see my average properly equals 9 now. So now I'm gonna step into again which is really just going to return this and it's gonna pop me out back here. Alright because now it's going to be assigning the this value of this get average function here into this uh, variable. So I'm gonna step into and now we can see my variable equals 9 so I'll step into again and now we see, now I'm trying to step into the actual, if we see what happened here, when I said step into, what it was really trying to do was step into this print line function, okay? So that's not really what I, what I want to do. So I'm gonna show you how to, in the next video, I'm really gonna show you how to uh, not step into things that you don't wanna step into. And to do that, we're gonna be using something called step filtering, but basically, now my execution is inside of here. It thinks that I'm trying to debug the actual print line function that comes with the Java library, the, the, the Java IO print stream. Okay, so really what I wanna do here is I'm going to immediately press the step return. Okay, and it's just gonna pop me right back out to where I really wanna be. And now I can see my output came out to nine down here at the bottom of my console. I can see the average is nine just like I wanted and this program is now working properly. All right, so hopefully you learned a little bit here. All we really went through was the step into function, and then we also did the step return function. In the next lesson, we're gonna be going over the step over function, and as well as step filtering, so we can avoid stepping into things, different libraries or external classes or whatever else that we don't really want to step into. All right, so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing so you can be notified when I come up with new content. Head over to my blog at www.pragmaticways.com. A link to that will be in the description below. And until next time, everyone, happy coding.